Hey, hey, Kat Miller here. In this session, I'm going to walk you through my end of year celebration and review process. This is a guided process. I'm going to be putting the link to it around this video so that you can walk through with me. It's called the ultimate end of year review. So, so good to see you here. This is going to help you celebrate your wins and also reflect on the things that have happened this year, who you've been, how you've shown up, all the things that you can glean, those those pieces of wisdom that you can glean from the year and how you can take that, take the learnings from, from this year and those significant moments and help you as you move into the next year. So it's going to be a fun process that will really help you to transition into the new year well and armed with really good, I want to say data, but it sounds so boring, <laughs> um, with really good insights and, and keys and tools that are going to help you in the future. So I'm sharing with you my powerful review tool, which will really help you to maximize those lessons, those learnings from the year, find the hidden gold and some really cool questions to prompt your reflections. I've also created a brand new tool called the Ultimate Business Plan Makeover, and I've been working on it a lot lately. I've filled it out myself. I really enjoyed it. And it basically helps you focus on what you want to focus on in the, in the new year what you want to take in with you and what you want to leave behind. So I'm going to share those with you. I'm going to make those links available um, around this video so that you can follow along and go through the process with me. So first of all, I want to say congratulations. I did have a drink here, but congratulations on all you have been and done this year. And this process of reviewing the year, this offers you a moment of appreciation and acknowledgement of the significance of your personal journey, the journey that you've been on over the last year. So as you really start to consider the experiences you've been through, the things that have shaped you, the highs and the lows, they have all contributed to who you are as a person and in the growth and the wisdom that you can glean from them is really powerful. So no matter how much you've done or not done, how much you've achieved or feel like you haven't achieved, there's always plenty to feel really good about. So as you engage in this process and as you reflect, I invite you to really open, approach it openly, to open your heart and to be curious and share as you write down your answers to the questions, just really share um, from an emotional place if emotions come up. Um, you know, we want this process to be something exciting and inspiring from you for you. It's a real opportunity to honor, to honor your unique path and look at the journey that you've traveled in the year. And that's why I love having days and weeks and months and quarters and years because we get these milestone moments that become like monuments. You know, back in the day, um, they used to set up mo monuments, um, well, they still do, but, you know, um, when they were traveling around, they would set up monuments of things that had happened in certain lands, right? And and I feel like the 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 way we look at a year or the way we approach different milestones in our life it, it, using our calendar is a real way to put a line in the sand. You know, a lot of people say, oh, there's no difference. The calendar ticks over. And, and I, I get that. Um, but it's a chance to really stop and pause and reflect and look at who you've become. So it's not just please don't just celebrate what you've done. <laughs> celebrate who you've become. So I want to give you some principles, three principles that I use, um, that I, I guess I infuse into my tools and into the processes that I use. Uh, I've been doing reflective processes at the end of each year for decades now. Um, I've always been a big fan of looking back before looking forward and, and setting goals. And, and I'm not a big fan necessarily of, news resolutions, but I am a big fan of taking the time to celebrate before we kick on and plan what's to come. And over the years that I've been doing it, I've really thought about what are the things that are important and the questions that we ask ourselves can make such a big difference. If you're a coach, you understand the power of asking the right questions, right? Quality questions lead to quality answers and the quality of our questions determine the quality of our life. Thank you, Tony Robbins. So here are three of the principles that I embed into, into the tools. So number one is you before do. 
you before do. <laughs> Actions follow identity. So basically, rather than saying, here's all the things I need to do, here's all the things I need to stop doing, here's all the bad habits, here's all the good habits that I want to be doing next year, um, that's all good, and I do that. But it's an easier thing, an easier way to approach it is, okay, I, I am going to write those things out that I want to do, be, do and have, but overarching is be right. We've we've probably all heard be do have in the personal development world. The way I like to think of it is, if you can decide who you want to be, and if you can decide, if you can keep it quite simple, like not not list a million character traits, but but think of those things that are really important to you in terms of who you want to be. Then the doing and the having they flow from that. I was just doing this process with my inner circle tonight and I was sharing about how when I was competing as a figure comp competitor, which is kind of a version of bodybuilding where you, you train for like six months, you diet and you get on stage and you get judged <laughs> in a bikini. And when I was doing that, the thing that got me to override the system in terms of my hunger and my tiredness and my pain threshold and all of that was my identity. It was being a role model. And by far being a role model has been the biggest thing that's driven me in my life to do really hard things. It doesn't sound like much getting up on stage and being judged in a bikini, but the work that goes into that, the amount of pain, the amount of times I had to ignore hunger, the amount of times I had to train when I was in pain, I like ran for six months on sore legs basically and just had to push through so many grueling sessions to get to that that peak physique and such low body fat. And it was all driven by the identity of being a role model. My clients are looking up to me. Um, my business relies on this because I was a personal trainer at the time and I was also training world champions at the time, world champion bodybuilders. So it, that's why I got up at all hours of the morning. That's why I train two or three times every single day without fail for for like a good six months. So identity is so powerful. So if you decide who do you want to be next year, what let's say you say a millionaire, what would a millionaire do? You're just going to, your actions are going to follow that. Uh, I, I want to be um, a leader. Okay. What would a leader do? Hard conversations, morning routines, discipline, commitment, showing up whether you feel like it or not. Um, managing conflict well, putting systems in place, all of those things. So who do you want to be in the coming year will really drive your actions. If you can start with that, you know, who do I want to be so proud of being? So the very first question in the, in the end of year review is who are you proud of being this year? Not what are you proud of doing, but the very first question is who are you proud of being? Actions follow identity, you before do. The second principle is everything can be a growth opportunity if you look for it. Everything can be a growth opportunity if you choose to see it that way. So when you look back, you're probably going to have some disappointments and some regrets, right? It's very normal. It's human. If we always hit every single thing on our goal list, potentially, maybe we didn't hit our goals make them as big as they could have been, potentially. Um, I'm not excusing falling short, but what I am saying is if we aim really high and then we get to here and who we've become in that process of getting to here is so much more powerful than if we just aimed kind of low. I, I just don't see any downside of dreaming big and setting big goals because who you grow into, and if you look at all the disappointments that you've had of um, the regrets that you've had throughout your life, it's because we've had a standard. There's actually a really good thing about having a bit of regret and disappointments because it mean, means that we've got a standard that we we can go, oh, I didn't quite hit it, but I know my standard and I want to hit it. And sometimes feeling the pain of that can be a really strong inspirational motivator and driver to hit it. Um, so it can all be a growth opportunity. Whatever happened this year was meant to happen. There's no point fighting it. It's out of our control. You know, we did what there are things within our control that we didn't like. There are things outside of our control that we didn't like. And all of it, we can reframe it. I use a very simple reframe statement. And 
just look at, okay, that happened for a reason. What can I take from it? I want to pull all the wisdom, all the hidden learnings and gems and everything I can and take it into next year and leave the rest and not get stuck on regret and disappointment because it's it's there's no point getting stuck there. It's got a purpose. It's It can be very motivational and drive us into doing more of what we want. Number three, goals are for who you become in the process of working towards them. And that's why I don't get stuck on whether I hit the goal or not, because obviously I'm chasing the goal. I'm very driven. I'm always pushing myself and I have a very strong work ethic and I put everything in. I'm very determined and I persevere and I've got a lot of endurance and I show up very consistently. However, there's a lot of goals that I haven't hit. There's a heap of things on my to-do list that I haven't got done. There's a whole lot of things that I wish I'd done better. Um, but who I've become by working towards those bigger goals that I and I haven't hit them all is the most important thing. Same with you. So we set goals not because it's all about just getting to that goal, but who we become along the journey. It's the whole thing about the journey, not the destination. So those are kind of my principles, whether you agree with them or not, that, that's kind of how I've set up um, my processes. So if that resonates with you, then I think you're going to like these these tools and these questions. So um, I'm going to share mine. Uh, hopefully that will just kind of prompt you or help you in some way. Um and give you some examples for for filling these out sometimes just staring at a blank blank document can kind of be like oh so it's really nice to you know talk about it um this is a really nice activity to do with other people um we do we do it in our inner circle every year maybe you get together with your partner with a best friend and you just sit or we do it as a sharing circle um so the first one is who are you proud of being this year i put that i'm proud of being a decisive business owner being hardworking, being consistent. I really feel that I am a role model of consistency, of constantly showing up, not based on how I feel, but what I've committed to. I've been a supportive coach. I've been a supportive trainer. I do a lot of training in my community. Um, I'm actually proud of being a great girlfriend, which I was quite scared of getting into a new relationship. So I met my partner, um, Tim in December 2022 and we fell in love very fast and I was really scared when I went back in the on the dating apps of wasting time I was really scared that because I spend so much time in my business like it's it's kind of it's not normal if you know what I mean like not that there's a normal but I knew that someone who worked nine to five would have to to, to understand that. So I was always a little bit paranoid that I was going to get pulled into um, my business too much and it would just detract from the relationship because business is such a strong, um, like on the wheel of life, it probably gets like 90% of my time. So um, that was being able to hold... <laughs> a solid, healthy relationship and get engaged is just, I'm really proud of being that, you know, being attentive to him, being aware of him, being, um, doing the best I can. And he's amazing. And, and I'm just so blessed that I feel like he's just such an amazing gift, but that was, that was probably my biggest achievement this year is to actually be able to balance it all. Um, I was proud of being a good friend I was proud of being consistent with exercise. Um, number two is what challenges are you proud of overcoming? Um, for me, it was investing quite a lot of money in Facebook ads and really having to work with the challenge around things changing online, algorithms changing, different ads not working, where I would pulled a lot of money into and having to start from, not from scratch, but like having to make a lot of shifts. Um, different things when it come, came to investing time and money, um, time and energy into areas outside of my business and being okay with that, actually being okay with not making that mean anything and letting go of fear and worry. I feel like that's been a really big, big one for me this year. Number three, what are some things you're proud of doing and creating? Uh, so what I recommend for this question is that you actually go through your calendar and you just look through look through your dates or I've got a one page visual calendar. And by the way, I've got this tool, which has the annual 
and your calendar on there and and a whole heap of questions that will help you. Um, I do a whole visual snapshot of the whole year and I color code it. So there's bright pink for holidays and there's blue for events. And I put the I put my holidays and my money making activities in first. And it's just a little hack that I've learned. It's not a hack. It's a it's a tip. Um, holidays and business, holidays and money making activities, like very specific money making activities. For me, it's mainly workshops and launches and events. Um, put those big rocks in first. And then put those consistent things that you want to be doing like every single week. Like for me, it's Facebook Live every single week. So I've done 50 Facebook Lives. I've done over 100 group calls. So I have two group calls in my community every week. Um, I've created new ads, new funnels. I've changed a whole system. I've created a heap of documents and frameworks for my clients. I've worked with over 50 clients this year. Um, every week I've created content. Uh, I've created hundreds and hundreds of emails. I need to add them up, but there's, there's been a lot. I've run a lot of things through AI. So I've upgraded and up-leveled a lot of my wording. Um, I've created a whole heap of templates for landing pages for my clients. I helped my partner launch a business. So those are some of the things. I just wanted to give you some examples of um of what I've done in case that's helpful. Um, so the rest of the process basically goes through, um, well, the next question is about your regrets and disappointments. And then after that, it goes a little bit more fun. But I just wanted to mention something here. When you get to this question, we basically talk about what are some of your regrets or, or disappointments from this year? And I just want to say like, it's very, very normal to feel like there are things unsaid, things undone, things you wish you'd done more of, things you wish you'd done less of. And it's very human, you know? I want you to like really approach it with a lot of love and kindness because regardless of what's happened, we get to choose how we feel about it, how we think about it, what we make it mean. We don't we don't have to let the story dictate it. You know, we can change the story. So I've just got a very simple reframe statement. Um, which is basically, even though this happened, I choose this. So I say, even though I wasn't as mindful as I wanted to be this year, I choose to forgive myself and use the wisdom to allow myself to be more mindful next year, more spacious, and be more successful next year. So that's what I wanted to share about the ultimate end of year review. Um, it then goes into what specific skills have you developed? How did you help others? Where did you have the most fun in your business? What are some things you learned about yourself? Like that's a really great question to just kind of wrap it up and say, okay, what are, what's that main thing um, that I learned about me personally? And then what do I want to take into next year? I hope that's been really helpful. The other tool that I created, the Ultimate Business Plan Makeover, if you work through the tabs on that, it really shows you there's a pipeline of pillars and it shows you where your gaps might be. And you basically hang you hang things under each of the pillars and it just helps you go, oh, this is where it's leaking in my business. This is where I want to plug the gaps. And then you can prioritize and help it, like use it to form your, your action plan. Um, the last thing I wanted to say is that if you imagine that you had the absolute best ever year, what would you be saying at the end of it? So to get the full power of this question, imagine that you are celebrating New Year's Eve next year and you're sitting with your friends and or your partner or your family or whoever, and you're celebrating. And I just want you to imagine what it is that you're telling them. What are you saying? Imagine sharing with them some of these questions that we're looking at this year. Imagine next year. What are you going to be saying? What are the things? What are some of the things that you've done? And what are the things that you let go of? And what are what are what are some of the character traits of who you've been as a person? And imagine that you're living just fully authentic, fully aligned to who you are in your joy, in freedom, in love, and you're just so proud of yourself. And just think back from that, what did you have to 
What did you have to do? Who did you have to be? What did you have to have? And also what did you have to let go of in order to be to be here at that vision, that ultimate vision that you have for next year? So just something to ponder as you fill in these, these tools. Um, I hope that's been really helpful. I look forward to seeing you in the next year. I want to wish you a very happy festive season, holiday season, Christmas if you celebrate it, and happy new year. This is um, my final video for the year, and I can't wait to see you in the next year. Take care, my friends. Stay awesome, and remember, the world needs you. You matter. Your voice matters, and what you say is really important. So I'll see you again in the new year. Big love. Bye for now.